Hi, this is Luke from MGN, and today we're going to talk about the Back for Blood beta. MGN was given early access beta keys for the new co-op zombie shooter game, Back for Blood, and it sucked. More? They want more? You, you want more? Uh, more Alright. I'm gonna start by disavowing some of the more common beta version excuses like, uh, you know, it's a beta, they can fix that, or... Uh, what do you expect? It's just a beta. Look, these are cop-outs, and they don't really apply to Back for Blood. Why? Because this model of the game that the players have been beta testing recently is something that the studio has made a statement by saying, this is a version of the game that we feel is at a point where it's playable enough for the audience to sink time into and provide feedback based on its current state. As such, I'm going to judge your game on that statement. If you feel comfortable in releasing this model to the world, even without it being the final product or the final version, well, it deserves to get assessed as such. Let's start with the card system. This is obviously something that Back for Blood wants it to be like sort of its key difference between this um, and its competitor in Left 4 Dead. This is something the developer wants to be the reason that when you sit down and open up your Steam library, that you select Back for Blood instead of Left 4 Dead. And it's absolutely awful for a lot of reasons. One of them being that the beta sort of has no introduction or tutorial for the card system, which without explanation is pretty ridiculously convoluted and really unintuitive. Having the key feature of your game beta tested without a tutorial or sort of any sort of in-game guidance, that's pretty unexplainable for me, I don't know what to say about that. Expecting players to provide fa valuable feedback on a system that you do not explain at all that is stupid to a ridiculous degree. It sort of lends credence to the fact that the Back for Blood beta is more about marketing than it is gaining and acting upon player feedback. Really just a marketing thing. If you want to release a demo of your game that looks and plays like shit, don't pretend it's a beta that you're going to gather feedback from, when it's obviously that's not your intent. Just call it a demo that looks and plays like shit that you've released to generate some buzz by getting sort of Twitch and YouTube personalities to play and then shill to their audiences. All right, we're gonna move on from the horrible implementation of the card system to how the gimmick actually functions. Like I said, it's supposed to be something that is gonna be back for blood sort of point of difference from Left 4 Dead. You get cards that are meant to change the gameplay very slightly so that each playthrough can be done a little differently or sort of optimized with certain roles card selections, you get the idea. It's not a bad idea. Turtle Rock Studios clearly needs something to help with the longevity of their game, because the angle that Left 4 Dead approach to get longevity out of their game, in quality, clearly isn't really going to be a factor with Back 4 Blood, so they've opted for providing that longevity and replayability in their card system. The problem is execution. The card system could have absolutely been fun and exciting, and something that would make you want to continuously do runs of the game's level, but it isn't executed well, and becomes something devoid of interest almost instantly. If you're going to have cards affect the gameplay to the point where the players are coming back time and time again, well they need to be impactful, they need to be interesting. Off the top of my head, they need to be something that, you know, alters the run, makes it more challenging, makes it more fun, something like, yeah. Uh, enemies will only die to headshots, or shooting allies will heal them at the cost of your own health and ammo, uh, allies can only be revived by throwing grenades at them, uh, this particular level is melee only but your movement speed is doubled, enemy pathing is reversed and friendly fire is increased, you know, stuff like that. You get the idea. And these are just some examples off the top of my head that would add an extra layer to the game, the challenge and enjoyment. Once sort of the gameplay of playing through the levels, you know, the enjoyment there starts to wear off over time, you can throw these in, they get a bit of variety and interest. Instead, we get watered down, cookie cutter, generic ass augments that don't really feel impactful whatsoever. Sure, they're there, and they're going to give your character a slight leg up, but they're simply not going to sell copies of Back 4 Blood. Considering that this is the system, that's the key difference between Back 4 Blood and the infinitely superior Left 4 Dead, well, the card system not selling copies is probably a bad thing. I'm going to put a few here, you know, just so you can gauge uh, why they're so bad and what I'm talking about, I guess. Uh, 
plus 5 health, plus 3 movement speed, plus 10% speed, reload speed I guess, um, plus 50% fire distance, plus 20% healing efficiency, uh, an extra item slot, blah, 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 you get the picture, they're boring. And that's the card system in a nutshell. Um, and that's all that's just about done differently from other examples in the genre of the card system. So what's left are elements that aren't new, but need to be executed better in order for there to be a reason not to launch other games. The first and most obvious one is that graphical technology has come a long way since the main competitor of Black for Blood was launched, Left 4 Dead obviously. Um, and therein lies the huge opportunity for the studio to provide a modern alternative to that game with lots of preen and polish and sparkles and all that good stuff. But, like I mentioned a little earlier, the game looks and runs like shit. The models for the zombies, I mean Ridden, are really uninspired. I'm shocked that they're not stock art from Google Images from the studio just searching for uh, generic boring zombie pictures in the Google Images tab. There's nothing original or interesting about the special enemies either. Uh, they grab you, they spit on you, they explode. If you're looking for a point of difference here in the enemies, or playable characters, or a reason to spend your money, you're gonna have to keep looking. And this is really telling in the animations. The animations for the game, I know it's just a beta, but they're woeful. Specifically, you're gonna notice if you've watched any beta footage whatsoever, the ammo loot drop animation from killing a Ridden can be measured in frames per hour? Animations for the game look more like a slideshow from Microsoft PowerPoint than a game that's reached a point in its development cycle that the studio is releasing a public beta for testing and feedback. Look, I know that that's something that can be fixed pre-launch, and my judgments are based on a beta model of the game, but wow. This should not be their benchmark for public testing. I, in my opinion, I, mean, I think the game needs like a full year with a big development team before it would even be suitable for public testing. Considering that this version is the beta and the game is expecting to launch only two months from now, you can expect a lot of the same issues that the current version has will absolutely still be there when the game is launched in two months. Look, there, there just simply isn't enough time between now and then for the game to be as good as Left 4 Dead, let alone better than it. Simply put, it's just worse and there's really no reason for you to buy it or play it instead of older games. I, I could keep going on, I could keep ranting, but the too long didn't read of the whole thing is that Back for Blood is a bad game with a bad name. Don't waste your money, um, and if you have an urge for the genre, just boot up Left 4 Dead and you won't regret it. Thanks for listening.